Hello everyone! If you are new here, my name is Crystal, also known as The Book Gypsy, and today I'm going to be wrapping up some books that I read in April and telling you a little bit about them. The first book that I finished in April was When the Sky Fell on Splendor by Emily Henry. I, for 80% of the book, I enjoyed it. But once it got towards the end, I was just like, what is happening in this book? Now, the, When the Sky Fell on Splendor is basically about a group of kids who, they like to film like ghost stories and kind of post stuff on YouTube and just like have fun with it. They're kind of like the outcasts of their generation in their town and they just want to have fun and just kind of find their way and basically something happens there's some like crazy like alien type invasion but they don't really say that but you're you, you're thinking it um and they acquire some type of weird powers when this happens um i had like one issue with the way that the story was told was because there was flashbacks but the flashbacks weren't like clear so it was very like um like present day and then past and you don't know which one was which uh once i got more familiar with the story i started i was able to tell what was in the past and what was in the present but there was no like divider to like change that up and that was kind of annoying i really didn't like how that was edited i think the past should have been written in either italics or had a separate like little interludes in between chapters just to kind of fill you in on what happened in the past with um, the main character's brother um, and how it connects to the story all the way to the end of what happened to the brother. He had like died in like a mining accident but there's a whole lot more to it. So it was just kind of like all over the place for me and I was entertained. Like I read the whole book within like two days um, but when I got to the end, I was like, nothing had, like, I just read all this information for no reason. So, I don't know. And I feel like now, um, there's not that many in alien invasion books. And when I was growing up, there were so many that were coming out. So many, like, UFO, like, invasion type stories that I was, like, excited that finally a book has come out after all these years that kind of have, like, that alien invasion vibe to it. Uh, but it wasn't really that. Like, it was... I don't want to give anything away, but especially if you're going to read it, but it was just like really weird. Um, the writing is beautiful. Emily Henry has a way with words. She does write really nice um, prose, but it was just, I don't know. So I gave the book a three star. So a three star rating for me is not a, it's not a bad book. I was entertained. It's just, it didn't meet the mark for me um i was just kind of like what the hell did i just read and yeah so that was that's pretty much it for that book um the next book that i finished this month was needful things by stephen king now i want to say that this is my least favorite stephen king book that i've read recently and i wish it wasn't because so many people love this book but I don't know I just felt like it kind of like missed something for me I think it was just too much information too many characters that like while I was reading it I was kind of like in outer space somewhere um I was kind of like trailing off and like thinking about oh I gotta go shopping like, like nothing was really holding my interest um I did like the pacing but I think it was a little too long. I mean, this is a big book. I don't think it needed to be that long of a book. Uh, pretty much all the way to like, I wanna say like 500 pages. It was just a lot of lead up to what was going to happen at the end. Uh, Leland Gaunt definitely was the perfect creep factor. He was, you know, toying with people's minds um, and basically turning people against each other. So I really like that concept um, on how far people will go for things that they want. Uh, so that's basically like what, you know, the story is about. Basically, Leland Gaunt forces people to go to the greatest lengths possible 
to get what they want in the end and then they're kind of like under this like spell kind of um it's really interesting but at the same time i was just kind of bored at the story i found myself kind of flipping through i had the audiobook so i was kind of listening to that back and forth um but it just really it didn't really do it for me like most of his books and he is one of my favorite authors so it's kind of like upsetting that i didn't love this book but you know you win some, you lose some. So I give this one a three out of five star. Uh, maybe I will revisit it one day and maybe I'll love it. Um, but right now I think, you know, the time that I read it, I just wasn't into it. So yeah. And then the next book that a that I finished this month was The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. And boy, oh boy, am I happy that I read this book because I wasn't really loving a lot of the things that I read this month. But I loved this book. I started it in March. I finished it in April. It took me a little while to finish the book, but I absolutely loved it, loved it, and I'm so glad that I read it the way that I did, a little bit on a slower pace. This way I could really absorb the story and understand the magic system. I really love the magic system in this series. It's so unique. It's so different. Um, the fact that they use metals to create the power within themselves is really, really cool. Um, and they eat the metals, which is really interesting. When I heard that concept before I read the book, I was like, that's just so far-fetched and so weird. But Brandon Sanderson somehow made it work, and it works, and it's great, and I love it. Uh, so I will be reading more from Brandon Sanderson. I am so happy that I finally read one of his books because... I've been missing out all this time, so I'm definitely going to be reading a lot more from him and continuing on with this series in the near future because it's so good. It's so good. And I need to know what happens. I need to know what happens. Uh, the ending of this kind of made me cry a little bit. Um, yeah, it was just really good. So now I understand why this is a lot of people's favorite series because it too might be one of my favorite series that fantasy series that I've ever read. The next book that I finished this month is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This was my favorite book that I read this month. I am just so happy that I read it. Uh, I read it rather quickly. I could not put it down. This is everything that I wanted this month. Um, I was feeling a little slumpish last month, so this really like brought me out of that slump, and I was just so excited to read when I read this. Um, and look how beautiful this book is. I'm just... I'm just in, enamored by it. It smells so good too. <laughs> I'm just gonna... This book is about four descendants from a family of people that were basically like saints in their town. They were able to destroy this monster that lived in the woods. Um, so they were, they're descendants of these four people that were able to destroy this monster that was in the Devouring Grey. And basically it's kind of like Stranger Things in a way where like the Grey is an alternate universe almost. It's not really the woods. Like you go into the woods and it transports you to the Grey and that's where the monster lives. So that I thought was really, really cool on how that was portrayed because you could really visualize and like feel the atmosphere of the Grey when you're reading it. It. Um, so it's basically about Violet and her family and it starts off with her moving back to this town where her mother grew up and Violet had no idea about her family and the history and all of that stuff that has to do with this town. She had no idea about it. She just knew that she was moving back to her mother's hometown to live with her aunt and her mom and their old house and just kind of start fresh. Uh, something had happened and the mom just had to come back home and basically she starts to find things out about her family, about the history of the town, about the monster, and all that fun, creepy stuff. And I absolutely loved this book so, so much. Um, five stars, hands down five stars. I would definitely love to read more from this author. She's very... The way she writes is very gothic, so if you're into that gothic style of writing, this book is perfect for you. It is a YA, but it's definitely darker and grittier, and there's a lot more that happens. The cast of characters are super diverse, so much happening between them, uh, so you see a lot of their relationships back and forth, which is really nice. Uh, 
to add to the story but it's just not it's not too much it's really there's really no romance in here like there is but there's very very little bit romance which I really enjoyed uh, it was more so about the town and the story and it just it kind of reminded me of like the confident a little bit like a lot of movies that came out in like early 2000s were similar to this um, so that kind of speaks to me because that's when I grew up. Basically, Violet and her founding friends of Four Paths have to figure out why there's bodies turning up in the woods and why people are dying again. Um, and yeah, so just read the book. If you want to read a creepy book about creepy woods, it's, it's all here for you. And it's kind of reminiscent of like... Saw Kill Girls with the woods aspect and the monster in the woods and like bodies turning up and all that stuff but it's really not like that book but it definitely gave me like that same feeling when I read Saw Kill Girls. The atmosphere is just very similar uh, so yeah so I really love this. I highly recommend it. It's a quick read so if you're looking for a book to add to like a readathon list or something like that this would be a great book to add and you could definitely read it very quickly because I did. And I'm a slow reader. And next up here, I have my Owls books. Um, I didn't really follow the readathon, like for rule for rule, because I just didn't have the time. I had a lot of stuff going on this month, so I I picked the books for my seer, and I am a seer now. Uh, I took my Owls exams, so I will show you, you know, the books that I read. I'm not going to tell you much about them because I did discuss that in my TBR video, but I finished Practical Magic. This was a reread for me. This is by Alice Hoffman. I love Alice Hoffman. I love her books. Um, so Practical Magic is one of my favorite books of all time. I love the movie. I love the book. They're very different from each other. So if you've only seen the movie, I suggest picking up the book and, and kind of seeing how things are a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. So five out of five stars again. Next book I finished, which I listened to it on my audiobook app, Audible, which was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and I liked it. Um, I did read a little bit, like, back and forth. I did like it, but it wasn't, like, great as everyone says it is. I don't know if I'm just in a fantasy funk, um, but it was very, very complex. A lot more complex than I thought it was going to be. I really like the points of views, how like we switch between characters and they have powers that go with the elements. So that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, also Mother Earth is speaking to you like you're destroying this planet and da 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 and you did this. So that's really cool too. It's kind of like what humanity did to the planet. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to go back, sorry the lighting, the sun is going in and out. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pick up the second book right away. I didn't really love it where I'm like I need the second book right now. A lot of people feel that way and I just didn't so I just think I'm not in the mood for like series stuff right now. But anyway, so I gave this like a three and a half out of five star just for like enjoyment factor. I wasn't really thrilled by it. Then next up I have a Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer, and I actually really enjoyed this book. It was a fun read. Uh, it was a great retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I enjoyed the characters. Uh, Harper was like a badass chick. I really like her character a lot. She she was not annoying. Uh, Ren, if anything, he was a little... Like, I could, you know, give or take him, really. I just... I couldn't really... Um, he was very whiny in the beginning, so I was just like, eh. Nothing about him was, like, swoon-worthy. Um, so, basically, this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And I thought Bridget Kemmerer did a great job of doing that. It's definitely a darker retelling. Um, I know Sarah J. Mass did A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I did read that series, and that was supposed to be, like, a retelling of Beauty and the Beast as well. But I felt like this was a better take on Beauty and the Beast. I like this. I actually really like this and I normally don't love retellings. I normally don't read retellings. But something about this, I think the cover really threw me. Like I was like, this is so pretty. Uh, I love the representation in here. The main character, I think she had, she had cystic fibrosis. So she, the representation of that was really accurate and it wasn't forced. It didn't feel like it was just thrown in there to have diversity. Like it felt very real. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, so yeah. 
So I really, I really enjoyed this. If people are gonna do retellings, it should be like very similar to how Bridget Kemmerer took the retelling because it still ho holds the core of the story. Um, but it was definitely on the darker side. It's definitely on the grimmer side. And I really, really like that a lot. So I would definitely read more from Bridget Kemmerer. I've never read anything from her. So if you have read any of her other books and you recommend them, please let me know in the comments down below because I really liked her writing. I really, really did. So, um, yeah, so I gave this a four out of five star because it wasn't perfect, but I really enjoyed it. And I read this in the bath. So that was really, it was a really good time. <laughs> it was nice. Okay, so that is it. That is it for my April wrap-up. I cannot believe we are at the end of April, beginning of May. This is so crazy. It's almost the summer. I start my job on Monday. Uh, today is Saturday, April 27th, and I'm just so excited to be making a video for you guys because I haven't really done much in a long time, so I'm trying to put together some more content, and I know I keep saying that, and I'm going to. It's just I want to... Make sure that you guys know that. Um, but anyway, that is it. That is all for my wrap up. And I'll be talking to you guys soon in my TBR video.